Sometimes I wish. I know it's an awful thing to say. Sometimes I wish I didn't believe. What? Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Galatians 6, verse 7. Terrible justice out there, Pauline. And there's no escape in it. Barry! What are you doing? I'm opening up for the tent, my love. I'll be 20 minutes tops. Huh? Right, well, I can't find the dry cleaning ticket for your soup. I haven't got it. Look in your wallet. What did you think you were going to wear? I don't know, I'm a grey sports jacket. It's a funeral. The thing is, I, I think maybe this suit, it's it, it shrunk a bit. Ha, oh, blooming ha. No, just stomach in and like it. I'll see you back now. Excuse me, uh, we're looking for... What's it called again? Big Dozy Moo. Albert Square. Of course it is, sorry. Um, Albert Square? Oh, right, yeah. 100 yards up under the bridge. You can't miss it. Oh, thanks very much. Vet in shop? Chippy? You'll be well taken care of, guys. It's not me coming to live here, is it? Stop winding her up. Yeah, but I ain't, am I? Is it in the club? No, that's snooker on. Beachy. Are we nearly there yet? It's about another five or six miles, Mo. Oh, we need to go it now. Well, you get your head down, girl. Get yourself a bit of kip, yeah? It's a busy market, I don't think. Here, Mo, there's a long direct. What? There's a long direct. You're going to be in your element. No, I still can't hear you. And a boozer. Full house. Maybe you will marry you after all, then, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the market ain't working. Look, the curtains are all closed. Those bunch of beggars are still in bed. Well, you'll be at home, won't you, Gary? <laughs> right, what number was it? 23. What's that cab? Where have they got to? Oh, the cock ups begin here. So, what do we think? Oh, well, it's not exactly Amsterdam, is it? How are we all going to fit in that? Oh, just have to be free in a bed, won't it? Oi! What's going on? Just stopped off for a cup of tea, Mo. We'll be back in 20 minutes. What? Where are they? Marvellous. We can't hang about, you know. I've got to get the van back for 12. It's another load yet. Where are we? Welcome to Slater Mansions, Mo. Oh! Oh, it's lovely. Blimey, you want to come have a look at this? What? More oh, the great unwashed. Ten grand off the value of the house for starters. Frank, Janine doesn't want to go to the oh, funeral. I didn't say that, Dad. All I said was that I don't... No arguments. No. Do as Peggy says. Oh. I'm sorry to drag you in, darling, but I just couldn't face a row. And shouldn't you be thinking of getting ready and all? We'll be setting off soon. There's a new family we're doing over the road. We're all young. Probably think they'll live forever. I was their age once. Do you know this hymn we're supposed to be singing? My hymn? At the service. Lead, kindly, light. I'm sure we're asking the wrong person, Roy. Oh, we're not going to know the tune, are we? It doesn't matter. Just mouth along. Apparently it was Ethel's favourite hymn. Oh, here's me thinking it was Lee's up Mother Brown. Oh, hello, Pat. Hi. Roy. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yes, please. How is she? Hey, um, Paulina, do you know the hymn we're singing, um, Lead, Kindly Light? Right, will you stop going on about it, please? I'm just worried about what it's going to look like, that's all. I mean, for Ethel's sake. But why can't we have Abide With Me, like everybody else? Maybe because Ethel wasn't like everybody else, Roy. Do you know? I'm got the foggiest. Well, we're stuffed then, aren't we? Right, for the last time, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you what. We could always get Doc to teach it to us now, if you like. Boy, can we show a bit of respect, please? Right, that's enough, you two. Come on through. <laughs> so. Thanks. Oh, Pat, Roy, I don't think you know Anita. She was Ethel's nurse. Oh, how'd you do, love? Nice to meet you. Yeah, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's ever so good of you to turn up. Oh, the least I can do for such a wonderful lady. And besides, I had to play postman. Oh, yeah? 
Well, Ethel had a few presents she wanted to leave for some of you. And she asked me to look after them for her until, well, till today. Well, what kind of presents? They're from Ethel Roy. Thank you. So don't expect any aftershave or cufflinks. Do you know what they are? Oh, yes, I know what they are. <laughs> but I'm not saying. Oh, where are Dad and Nan? This is just getting silly. Yeah, we know what your old man's like, didn't you? He's probably talking to some geezer down the housing department about the 64 Cup final. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Robbie. I'm uh, your next door neighbour. Never a guest. Cheap. Still more than you can afford. Excuse me. Is this stuff going to be left lying here all day? Oh, sorry, um, we're locked out. We're just waiting for the keys. Oh, it's all right. We're sorted. He can't leave that there. You know, I think we've got one of those neighbours they do teleprograms about. Where you been? Well, he's lost all our flaming forms. But... Uh, yeah. right, be careful with that girl. Carrying the crown jewels <laughs> there. Who's going to be the first over the threshold? Well, surely it's got to be your nan, eh? Yeah. Mo! Not changed in 30 years. Still the same old dump. <laughs> but not for long, eh? Give us those keys. Three cheers for Her Majesty, who's about to take up formal residence in her new palace. Yeah! Yeah! I formally declare the new Slater. <laughs> <laughs> They've only given us the wrong pig in key. Oh. Well, it's got 23 Albert Square on the key ring. Are you calling me a liar? No. It won't turn. Leave it to the expert. Well, let the dog see the rabbit then. Right. Well, the thatch is down on the inside. How's that happened? I've been more than patient. You're going to have to move your cab. What's the problem? Well, it's blocking the road. Right, just give me a couple of minutes while I sort it out. All right, mate? Mo, go round the back and let us in. Get the keys off of Gary. What? Don't fuss. Just do it. Oh, oh, I want what? it shifted now. Yeah, all right. I'll and just... who are you? I live up there. Well, I wouldn't get off on the wrong foot with me, Sonny, if I was you. No, and Dad. Oh, sorry, mate. I didn't realise. And I want this van and all this stuff moved as well, because they're going to be coming round this way in a minute. Like you said, let's not get off on the wrong foot. Well, from what I can work out, it's four daughters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tasty. Do you mind? If you don't like it, don't listen. No, slap us. You're doing it on yeah. purpose. And then there's a the grandmother from hell. Oh, yeah. yeah. Remember when we were kids and we used to watch that wrestler on a Saturday afternoon? What, Big Daddy? Yeah, that's the one. Little version of him. <laughs> I think you're both being really horrible. You saw what they were like. You haven't even given them a chance yet. Right, that was the funeral director. We've got to get a move on. I think we be at the crematorium for 11. Right, OK. Yeah. Why are we using the front door? We never use the front door in this house. Mark of respect, right? Yeah, and get your hands out your pockets. Go on. <sighs> Dot. Are you coming, Dot? He knows. Who does? God will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. I feel like I'm going to burst. Well, hold your stomach in. Uh, that's going to the second car with Peggy and Frank, so we're going in this one together, OK? Right. Nat, you ever been to church, car? Of uh, Sunday school when I was a kid. Have you ever come across the hymn, Lead, Kindly Light? No, I don't think so. I hardly knew her. I mean, I didn't even speak half a dozen words to her. And this is going to take all morning. Shut up. Uh, what? The moaning. You're boring me. <sighs> and guess what? What? You're going to have a funeral too one day. You're carrying like this, you're going to be the only one that turns up. So show some respect. <sighs> Pauline said we're in the same car. Don't look at me like that. It's not my doing, honest. Nan, I've tried.
tried and I've tried, the lock turns, but the door must be bolted from the inside. So we are break in and send the council the bill. Oh. Please, so come and give us a hand shift in this lot. The funeral's going to be here in a minute. Look, in a minute, all right? Try to do something about this. Well, why me? It was your idea. We can't have them breaking in their own house. All right, leave it with me. I'll think of something. Oh, I can't believe me luck. Look these women about. I feel 40 years younger. Yeah, you go on, Grandad, all right? We're going to give a hand here. Pick us up when Phil's car gets around the corner. Right, OK, yes. Yeah. Well? I'm still thinking. Come on, you two! make of all this? Not Ethel. <laughs> Should have fallen over laughing. Yeah, but for a woman who's not famous and not even that important, you think she was a princess or something? The point is that people loved her. And you don't love someone because they're important. You love them for what they are. People do choose their moments. What a load of old tat. Do you know him, Frank? No. You all right, Pat? Yeah. yeah. Who's that woman, then? Her name's Pat. She's been through so many husbands, I couldn't even tell you what her second name was these days. What, and is there a problem? For her there is, yeah. Let's get this door open. Someone find me a crowbar. Oh. Here, M, M. Eddie Skinner. Afraid so. I'm too old to change now, Doc. How are you? Makes you think, doesn't it? Who'll be next? You always was a little ray of sunshine. Well, when I heard that Aunt Ethel was ill, I was all set to come up here and see her. It's just a shame she couldn't have hung around for a couple more days. But that's life. Or not, as the case may be. It's never Eddie. <laughs> hey, better not. Look, I'm still nursing a cold. All oh, right. Do you know, on the way up here, I thought to myself, I wonder if Pauline's still the most gorgeous girl in Warford. <laughs> but then none of us are getting any younger, are we? What Pete and Arthur, eh? Oh, uh... Well, it's the last of the Mohicans, is it? I'll explain to you later. Welcome, everybody. We're here today to celebrate the life of Ethel Skinner, one of the great characters of London's East End. And while I know there are bound to be tears, I think it's appropriate there should also be lots of laughter, because I know that's the way you're all going to remember her. 
as a wonderful woman who brought joy and mischief and fun into the lives of everyone who ever had the privilege of knowing her. Ethel was something of a fortune teller, but I wonder if, when she was looking into her tea leaves, she ever realised just how much she'd be missed. To someone who never knew Ethel, I might relate the bare facts of her life, and they may seem unremarkable. Factory worker, shop assistant, canteen lady, loyal wife. What did she ever do, we may ask ourselves? Well, I'll tell you what she did. She lit up our lives. No medals for Ethel, maybe. No statue in the park. But I can tell you that heaven will never be quite the same place again now that Ethel's there. <laughs> so where shall I begin? Well, why don't we start with Ethel and her dog, her little Willy. <laughs> I see you're laughing already. Hi, then. Hi. Right. I've got all the beds. All we've got to do is decide who's going where. Uh, front bedroom, please. Not so fast, young lady. I've worked all this out. Lynn's in the front with Kat. Oh, what? Oh, I'm next to the bathroom. Charlie's downstairs in the back room here, so he don't disturb us when he's on lates. And so he's in the back with little Mo. Not again. I'm nearly 17. <laughs> no arguments. She's got her own flat. Why can't she stay in it? She will when Trevor's around, but at the moment he's not. So, what's wrong with your own place? Look, you know little Mo gets nervous when she's on her own. A little bit of understanding, please, love. Hmm? We shall now sing what Dot tells me was Ethel's favourite hymn, Lead Kindly Light. <laughs> Girls have got a twinkle. It's just that some are a little bit shy about showing it, that's all. Now, you're either A, not twinkling because you don't like me, or B, you do like me but you just don't want to show it. And me, ever the optimist, as you down as the letter. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Mm. Mm. Are you Scandinavian? Hardly. Ah, now you say that, but that could account for your lack of twinkle. I mean, you could be a Dane, don't have no experience, possibly, or even a Swede. Sauce with everything, double helpings, maybe. Personally, I reckon you're a bit of a fin. And what's a fin? Mm. Well, I would tell you, oh, I don't fancy a slap. <laughs> Is that a twinkle? Yes, we have a twinkle. And you're moving in across the square? No, no, I'm just a friend of the family, like, you know. I've got my own place, bachelor patch, you know. Sorry, Gary. Mel, so what's your line of work? Car mechanic in theory. So if ever you do need your spark plugs polishing, I'm your man. Do you make these yourself? No, you can't. We've got a funeral in here in a bit. Oh, I might have known. I ain't at this rate. I'll see you later. Us Scandinavians should stick together. Why, what are you? Me. I'm from Lapland. What are you doing? You are beautiful when you're angry. Have you got one or not? Mm. Yeah, you're lucky. Hold still. 
Ah. And your fingers. Have you been drinking beer again behind my back? No. You, yeah, not Mother Teresa. I haven't. Well, I'll be watching you like a hawk from now on. So it's not just Arthur and Pete, but Reg Cox, Dame Watts. Who else? Oh, it was my mother, of course. Oh, your mother, of course, yeah. Really does make you wonder who's going to be next, doesn't it? Mm. Well, I'm so glad you turned up, Eddie. You've cheered me up no end. Martin, come here, dear. There's someone I want you to meet. This is Eddie Skinner, Ethel's nephew. I haven't seen him since I was 25 years old. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, too. Martin's my youngest boy. What? You had another? Blimey, you're a glum for punishment. <laughs> you have to understand Eddie's sense of humour. What happened to your other two? Oh, well, Michelle, she lives in Florida now with her two children, and Mark, um, he's just over there. Oh. Got him out of nappies, eh? <laughs> hey, come on, Sonia. Ethel wouldn't ever see you like this. I know, Frank, but it's not because I'm unhappy. That's uh, what that picker said about Ethel and her William being so in love with each other. I know you wouldn't think it from where we live, but... People do stay together sometimes, don't they? Of course I do, darling. I know it sounds old-fashioned, but to love one person for the whole of your life, I just think it's wonderful. I don't want to be like that. Hey, young man, there's nothing to be ashamed of. <coughs> She's right, you know. <laughs> hey, Pauline. I think the undertaker's getting a bit fidgety. Right, I'll start sorting the people out with the cars. Oh, Pat, you remember Ethel's nephew, Eddie, don't you? Is it really? I know, I know. I haven't changed, have I? Still 25 years old. You're coming back to the bit. Well, we've all got to die of something. It might as well be drink. Do you know you're the second person today I've seen in... Oh, I don't know how long. Oh, yeah, who was the other? Didn't you clock the new family moving into 23? Didn't really take any notice. Maureen Harris. Well... Oh, uh, that was. Pat. We'll talk about it later. I'll see you back there. Not the Maureen Harris. Oh, they can't have made more than one. <sighs> Dot, I bet you never imagined yourself at Ethel's funeral. I really thought she'd outlive us all. Well, she was 85, Nelly. 86. I had her down for a telegram from the Queen. Mind you, I don't suppose all that stamp did a lot to good. Oh, I don't know. I'd rather have had half an hour of Ethel drunk than a lifetime of some other sober. It must be some consolation to you, Dot, that you nursed her through a last illness. Right, now, come on, I'm just getting people organised, getting back in the car. If it's all right with you, I'll find my own way to the pit, because I'd like a little time on my own, if you don't mind. Well, are you sure? I mean, how will you get back? Well, I'll find my own way, please. Right, uh, come on, Nelly. Right. Bye. Stop. I'm worried about you. That makes two of us. Look, there is no point in punishing yourself about this. Right, who's for the pub, then? Now you're talking. We've got work to do. Yeah, we've still got a week, though, haven't we? I know for a fact they've got a free load of signies over there, haven't I? Who's up for it? First two drinks were on Ian Bill, so name your poison. Just one, please. No, you've had your chance. From now on, I make the decisions, Frank. I'll have an orange juice, and Barry here will have a slim lime tonic. Slim lime tonic. <laughs> Did it have to be quite so lavish? She deserves it. And we've got builders and supplies breathing down our neck. You know, I don't think you realise quite how serious the situation is. When I was a kid, my mum and dad were always rowing. I couldn't always go around at my grand's, but the one place I knew where the door was always open was Ethel's. I am not going to start worrying about cost at a time like this. All right? I think it's brilliant. I should be thinking about John Beppe's tea. Back it going. I didn't mean to upset you. Cheers. Here we go. Oh, cheers. Why are we sitting here being so miserable? This isn't the way Ethel would have wanted it. Pauline, you haven't forgotten about Ethel's presence, have you? Oh, good point, Anita. Mark, be a love, will you? Nip over home and get Ethel's presence. They're in a box on the table in the sitting room. All right, Mum.
Yeah. That must be Maureen Harris. I mean, she's knocking on a bit, aren't she? <laughs> Oi, Maureen! Oh, what the hell am I going to do? I can't just ignore her. It's up to you. I don't understand. Who is she? Maureen Harris. She used to be married to Pat's brother. Oh, that Maureen. Yes, that Maureen. Eddie Skinner. Correct. And this must be your son-in-law. For my sins, Charlie. This is Eddie Skinner, Ethel's nephew. Ah, uh, pleased to meet you. Likewise. You knew Ethel at one time, didn't you? The filthiest sense of humour in any woman I met. <laughs> yeah, she'd be very sadly missed. Man too, for that matter. Look at her. Back here five minutes is like she already owned the place. <laughs> Just ignore her. How can I when she's living 25 yards from my front door? Where are you going? To get it over with. Hello, Mo. Well, I do declare. Long time. Indeed. How are you? Not so bad, all things considered. I've picked up one and two bits of bobs about you. How many husbands is it now? Look, I come over here to try and bury the hatchet. The one you planted in my back? The only trouble is it's still there and it still hurts. Doesn't matter. Just give me a last gin tea, will you please, Frank? Yeah. Here we go, Mum. Can I have your attention, please, everybody? Um, I've got a few presents here from Ethel. Uh, she put them to one side when she realised that, well, she wasn't going to be with us for much longer. According to Anita, she called them her going away presents. So I've no idea what's in them. My instructions are just to unwrap them and read out the message. So if you haven't got one, think yourself lucky. And if you have, be prepared to be embarrassed. <laughs> right, first up. Oh, Frank and Roy. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> That's Martin's. I gave it him for his birthday once. <laughs> All right, well, let me read the message out. For Frank and Roy, it doesn't really work, but when did that ever stop you? <laughs> Put it on the car lot and buy everyone a drink with what you get for it. <laughs> P.S. I stole it from Martin's old toy box, just in case you were worried it was kosher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up. Peggy. Me? Mm -hmm. See what you get. <laughs> Dear Peggy, this is Willie's old lead. Put it round Frank's neck when you find him sniffing lampposts. <laughs> 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 well, thank you very much. <laughs> now, ah, oh, Pat. <laughs> Darling Pat, let's see what she's got. <laughs> oh, no. For darling Pat, cos one man was never enough, love Ethel. P.S. Oh. Don't tell Roy. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> and next, Ian. What does it say? You're a good boy, really. Why'd you have to keep it a secret? Lots of love, Ethel. Oh, it's a Beatles record. Oh. What is it, Paulie? Money can't buy me love. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this one's for me. What have we got? Oh, I say. Look at that. Just what I always needed. Uh, dear Pauline, leave this in the laundrette and let the lazy beggars do their own washing from now on. Or better still, just stay dirty. <laughs> Much love, Ethel. And the last one, well, this must be for Dot. Is she here? I can't very well mm. give it out if she's not here. Oh, it's half out the wrapper anyway. Oh, oh, look. So what does the message say, Mum? There wasn't one. I don't think it needs it, really, do you? Right, I, I tell you what, let's uh, let's have a toast, eh? Yeah. Raise our glasses, we're toasties to Ethel. 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 They left a space for you, Ethel. Stonemason will be along any day now. I know how much you missed him. More than I miss my Charlie. 
The only difference is you're with him now and you always will be, where I don't think I'll ever see my Charlie again because there's no room in heaven for someone who's done what I've done. And I'm so scared. And I miss you so much. <laughs> uh.